building this Mazda Protege 5 has been quite an experience. What started out as a simple, more or less throwaway car that we bought for Taylor's Top Gear style bachelor trip quickly won over our hearts. I knew that after bonding with this abused car, that it was worthy of not just a rebuild, but rather something new entirely. This Mazda had the makings of something great. It only needed a ton of work to get there. Now that the scope creep is over, it's time to put this thing to the test. As followers of the channel will know, the other half of Bruner Tuner, Taylor, moved to Virginia last year. Why don't we use the finish of this project as a way to reunite with our friend and take in some new scenery and experiences along the way. But first, I have to stop at Starbucks because I'm a bit of a basic white boy. The first leg of this journey will be a familiar one for me, as we're just making our way out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. All right, guys, I uh, have stopped here at a QT. I'm gonna fill this thing up and um, just make sure, I'm gonna check all the tire pressures too and uh, make sure that those are aired up. I wanna see what kind of mileage this thing gets because, um, you know, before that brake issue, there was that, all that parasitic drag and it was uh, it was really bad. And then um, I'm just curious to see what it's like with these all-terrain tires, roof rack, um, a little bit of added weight and everything. So I'm gonna fill up and do this the manual way because this does not have a trip meter. So let's do that, and I'll be right back. Oh my god, guys. Filling up the tires turned into a debacle. I didn't film any of that, but I ended up at four different QTs, all of either which the pump or the pumps were broken or the air chuck in one case. Actually, it was uh, such a loose fit that it was just letting air out of one of the tires. So lo and behold, I came over here and worked perfectly. These ones are super nice. You just set the pressure and go. And uh, so yeah, super nice. Anyways, go to Costco. It's free. Works really well. All right. One last stop here at Auto zone. We're gonna get in the zone real quick. This is like third place for me. Usually I prefer advanced auto or O'Reilly's, but third tier will do today. It's close. Unless Auto Zone, you're watching this, and then you are tier number one, and you will go in all my videos. I'm just gonna go in and grab a quart of oil. You know, have it on hand because this thing does burn just a tad. Um, so it'll be good to have on hand. guys so if you're wondering how loud the car is with uh you know added roof rack led light bar winter tires loaded down with gear and everything this is about how loud it is at 75 miles an hour this road um, surface is not very nice either it's a little bit louder but i put that silencer in and um that exhaust it's not terribly loud anyways but i figured for a road trip i put the silencer in and it definitely helps for sure but it's very livable in here, very comfortable. Um, you know, I've got decent audio in here. It's got that factory installed subwoofer and the speakers are halfway decent. So just jam in and uh, we're on our merry way. Before 
right guys well we're about four and a half hours into this trip and uh it's going really well car is behaving great um you know stop to get some oil and stuff just to make sure we're topped off want to make sure that this car stays reliable just burns a tad bit of oil as i mentioned but you know it's really comfortable and um seems to be doing pretty efficiently in terms of gas and everything and uh yeah, good sound system, like decent seats, comfortable, pretty quiet interior for what it is. And uh, I think, you know, you'll hear me mention it on this channel, but I think there's just so much value in a lot of these used cars, you know. Um, I mean, I honestly overpaid for this car. I was in a hurry to buy it for that trip. But $2,500 still, maybe about $1,000 in uh, suspension parts and... Uh, you know, a new alternator and some belts and stuff. Um, obviously, I changed the tires and all that, but, you know, it uh, it really just shows you, I mean, this is a 20-year-old car at this point, and, and it was a pretty haggard example of one at that. Um, so if you find a good, clean car, you know, you can really get a lot of value for your money. You don't need to go out and spend, you know, $30,000 on, you know, a pretty regular car. You know, granted, it's going to be pretty nice and we got to have a warranty and stuff but you know there's there's pretty good cars out there good platforms that are pretty reliable and if you're willing to do some of the work yourself you know you can really just end up with a, a good monetary value in a car so i'm just excited you know we brought new life to this thing it's a really cool car people love these things but anyways yeah uh, i'm just happy we brought life back to this thing and you know are using it uh, as intended. A lot of people love this protege, this this chassis, this model year, and um, I don't know, it feels good to have it on the road and, you know, like a really complete whole car again. All right, I made very poor time at the uh, beginning of this trip, so I'm trying to make up for it now, but I need to stop, take a bathroom break, get some gourmet Taco Bell, do a couple stretches. That ACL surgery I had earlier this year is kind of messing with my knee a bit so i need to get out and stretch that in my back my back hurts as well not from carrying this team but just from getting older man demolition man was right taco bell gonna win the franchise wars be here after the world ends i'm gonna pass countless trees and forests on the drive from texas to virginia through every state it just seemed like there were trees lined left and right of the highway all right we are Pretty close to empty here. Uh, got 17 miles until the QT I have routed out. But uh, the gas light's been on for probably 15, 16 miles already. So hoping that we make it. I did fill up my extra gas can that you saw me put on the top there. So I can always pull over and add some. I don't want to, especially like right here, there's no shoulder. So uh, I hope I don't run out, but if I do, could be worse. Y'all pray for me. All right, well, we did make it to the gas station. Got it right at 297.4. I'm confident we could have gone to 300, so let's just say um, 300 miles on that last tank and I'll figure out how big the tank was. We'll fill up here, see how much we used and uh, calculate that MPG, see what we got. All right, we just put in 12.7 gallons, so uh, math comes out to uh, right about 24 miles to the gallon, which is uh, halfway decent. So this is crazy, like for the past like 70 miles or so, there's been nothing out here. Like I've not passed like really any businesses or gas stations or anything. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of surprised because this is a pretty major highway. I'm really glad that I have my uh, extra gas and some tools with me. God forbid you have a blowout or something and don't have a spare or whatever. Just can't believe it's like this empty over here in uh, 
in East Arkansas where I'm at. This is so cool, there's snow, there's snow, there's snow. It's amazing just how well this LED light bar works. This is actually from a partner of ours, Lost Fit, and this made all the difference out there in the middle of the Tennessee countryside. Using our link below, you can actually get 15% off of any of their products, ranging from their LED light bars to their LED headlight bulbs, fog light bulbs, etc. They're a wonderful product, and we couldn't be happier to have them as a partner on this channel. It's dark out here. Regular, high LED light bar. I am way the hell out here. It's on some gravelly snow right now. It's starting to kind of build up too. driven in snow on snow tires. I've been on all terrains. They're pretty good, but these seem to be doing excellent. Oh, there's a couple deer. <laughs> my mind for coming out here alone what the hell is wrong with me there is nothing out here there's nobody nothing I'm so far from anything all right why am I out here just absolutely in the piss middle of nowhere by myself in a in a Mazda protege In the snow. What else do I say? How many and in the... Um, it's a Jeep thing. You wouldn't get it in a Mazda. This is wild. There is 0, 0 0.0 of anything out here. I am just... Tearing the paint up on this thing. It's a Jeep thing. Okay, where does this go? I don't. Mm, I don't know about going down. Well, not a lot I can do now. I better get out on foot and scope that out. Because that looks like it goes to nowhere. Okay. Don't know what's down there. Here I am. Nestled up here in the trees. Yes. Dude. To tell, but it's pretty steep actually. Just don't know what's down there. So I am currently facing the trail that I came in on. Let's see if we can see any of this. Where am I at? It is dead silent. I should be 
freaked out right now, but I'm not. I didn't really go down there very far, but I should probably just not chance my luck, especially at night. I'm trying to sing around. Probably be okay. But. So, picture like a canyon road with two little cliffs on each side. That's currently what I'm reversing into. This thing too is it has a wonderful little turning radius and a pretty short wheelbase so this car has a very small footprint overall actually so gotta make these things stop jingling down here Goblin mode, she's just gobbling it up. Just waiting to like turn a corner, and there's someone standing in the middle of the road. Not gonna be able to see me super well unless I do something like this, but we are here at the car and it is time to now set up our little hotel. Let's hope we don't get stuck. Right, guys here we are in my humble abode so I'll give you a little tour here but got it all set up and wow it is actually super cozy in here uh, it's kind of ridiculous like um, I'm actually getting a little warm and it's sub 30 um, you know granted I'm moving around a bit but I'm gonna have no problem sleeping tonight I've got a sleeping bag and um, blankets and stuff if I really need it 
on this edition of Cribs, I'm going to show you the back of my Mazda Protege 5. So let's start off over here. This is the hatch, of course, and I have my blackout curtains up. And uh, yeah, they're just going to help out a ton here. Um, you know, it just makes me feel a little better knowing that someone's not just like going to come up and watch. I mean, we are in the middle of nowhere, and I really mean like the middle of nowhere. But uh, yeah, something weird about just people just being able to come up and see what you're doing. So I don't know. I don't like it. All right. Yep. So you see, I've got these string lights up here. I've got a little cargo net. Uh, quick access items, you know, change of clothes, toiletries, important snacks, of course. I have my uh, Mazda Protege 5 custom windshield up, uh, windshield cover up. That was one that I bought the sunscreen, so you can't see through that either. And then got the curtains over here. Got my pillows and a blanket underneath that, and then my inflatable, self inflatable pads. I took the seat backs off of the back seats and propped them up here so you can lean up kind of like a couch or a bed. Um, and then underneath that, if I pull it back, I've got bags down there. I don't have a light on right now to show you, but anyways, camera died there, but yeah, I got my blackout curtains up and everything, blanket, sleeping bag, comforter, and my little string lights, as well as my Bluetooth speaker, which I can, you know, connect to my laptop and my phone watch a movie, watch some YouTube. I'm actually streaming it off my phone right now even though we're in the middle of nowhere. Somehow this is better than my home internet, I swear. And yeah, it's just uh, super cozy in here and I am not cold at all, which is uh, kind of surprising, but it's crazy, yeah. And I can fully extend out in here easily, lay down, watch a movie, and just chill. Yeah, super nice in here, very peaceful. All right, guys, we just completed our first night of camping in this thing and it went incredibly well. I feel super rested and uh, it stayed really nice and warm in there and felt great actually. So I'm really happy with the results of, um, you know, the mods that we did to, to do that. Car just started up no problem at all. But guys, check out the landscape around here. It is dead silent. Guys, we are unintentionally a little bit buried in. Apparently there's a ton of mud under that. <laughs> I was not planning this for the video, I swear. <laughs> what the heck? Oh man. But uh, yeah, really glad I brought those traction boards now. I, didn't, I really didn't think I was probably gonna use them during the trip, but now I'm really glad I have them. <laughs> I 
only fit one in there. On the other side, it's too low, and it's really sinking, so. Let's see if we can make this one work. God, I can't believe I uh, got it stuck there. That's really lame. Um, yeah, but uh, anyways, called a tow truck. Uh, the first one, they didn't want to do it. Apparently, the roads are icy. I don't know how much I believe that. It was totally fine last night in this car. So, and something like that is probably going to be super easy. But managed to get a hold of another really nice guy. He's going to get in just his four wheel drive truck and come out here and hopefully pull us out pretty soon. So, just got to play the waiting game a little bit. Woo! All right, ladies and germs, we made it. The uh, tow truck never showed up. Um, not sure what happened to him, but a uh, really kind stranger by the name of Joe happened to drive by, and um, he pulled me out with his truck. Had to throw this thing in reverse and uh, put those traction boards under there, and we got it up the hill. So thank you, Joe. If you're watching this, really appreciate you. The kindness of strangers is something that... Um, it's always a bit moving. It's uh, it's really awesome to meet people like that. Super kind. So anyways, with that, let's uh, make the journey to Nashville now. Hopefully, no issues. All right, we are here in the charming little town of Waverly, directly, uh, you know, following the incident this morning, which look how dirty it is. Really glad I got these rubberized floor mats here. Look at my shoes and my pants though. I need to change real quick. We're gonna have to clean this car up at some point. My hands are also really dirty. It's hard to see because it blends in with my skin. It's like a red clayish color. But with that being said, I'm gonna go in there, clean up a little bit, change clothes before I go in, and then uh, yeah, have some good breakfast and coffee at this little Waverly Cafe place. I 
I really wanted to stop off in Nashville for a bit longer and explore and try out Hattie B's Nashville Hot Chicken. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time, so I settled for some Nashville Hot Chicken pizza that I found local. After that short lunch stop, it was time to continue on through Tennessee on the way to Virginia. Oh, okay. Alrighty guys, well, it is just after midnight here. Um, I'm trying to think of the last update I did. Uh, the, the, the. I don't know, did I even update in Nashville? Anyways, I went through Nashville earlier today and um, it was pretty nice. And it had stopped and got some pizza there. Um, anyways, I am all the way in Roanoke, Virginia though. Um, but with the way the timetable this morning kind of got screwed up with uh, getting stuck in the mud and everything. I also woke up a bit later than I planned. Um, I'm gonna make another stop here. I was planning to get to Virginia Beach tonight to see Taylor, but I am too tired. It's midnight and I'm just gonna stop here for the night. Um, I, I'm not even bothering camping anywhere this time, really. Um, I was having trouble finding any campsites that were nearby, so that weren't like totally in the backwoods, you know, where it looked like it could be a potential issue with getting stuck or something. So I am at a rest stop right off the interstate and I'm um, gonna do my little thing here in the car again, set up camp. Uh, interestingly enough, there's a van right next to me that has done the same thing. Actually, there's several vehicles here that have, um, yeah, this van though, uh, they have up all these, um, they have all like the sunshades up, like the uh, foil ones, like for your windshield. And it's pretty cool actually. It looks like a nice cozy setup, but it also kind of looks like a rape van too. So I don't know, take that as you will. Kind of cool. A little bit of a rape fan. So I'm gonna set up shop here and I will see you guys in the morning. Oh my God, guys. It is way colder this morning. Way colder for sure. I still slept really well. Um, curled up in my sleeping bag and everything. No problem at all, but once I got up, holy crap. My hands are just freezing. I had to put on these gloves that I bought from AutoZone yesterday and uh, layer up and I am still just freezing. It is uh, much colder. All the windows had frozen over. I've uh, kind of defrosted a lot of them at this point, but oh my God. I don't know. It says it got down to 26, so maybe not super colder, but oh man, it just feels like it out here. I don't know. <laughs> it's just hitting different. Here's what it looks like in lovely Virginia right now. Here's the uh, truck stop I was at. Or the rest area, I guess. Rest area truck stop. So, pretty lovely morning. Just really cold but everything's warmed up now, so let's go ahead and hit the road. All right, ladies and germs, we are somewhere past uh, Salem, not Massachusetts, Salem, Virginia. No witches on trial here, except maybe my ex-wife, Deborah. But um, I'm gonna stop off for some uh, some coffee and some breakfast here at this little place. Looks like it's called uh, Mill Mountain Coffee and Tea. But on these trips, I like to try to do it local and uh, go get some local eats and everything. So yeah, here we go.
right guys, we are about an hour and 45 minutes away. We are so close. Car is still doing wonderful. Everything is up to par. Everything looks good. One last stop for a bathroom break. Gonna grab a little bit of food, fill up some gas, and then we are gonna be at Taylor's. Car is doing great. I keep finding these knockoff Protege 5s though. Cheap imitations. Meet the original. Never forget to check your oil and your 20 year old clapped out piece of crap. With the sight of the ocean finally here, that signaled that we had made it to our destination, Virginia Beach. We made it. The car did it, guys. It did it. Let's go bother this old chap. Wake him up. Ah, oh, the old Audi. Haven't seen her in a while. Nice, see they got a Christmas tree in their front yard. I'm filming. I'm filming you, filming me. Taylor sure was taking a long time to answer the door for someone that had been on a 20 hour road trip and had to pee. That little boy made it. Who f parked this thing here? Who f parked this thing here? What? Is it this guy peeing in my backyard? <laughs> <laughs> I like that you weren't filming because I was going to film you. I know. <laughs> What's up, dude? What's up, dude? How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. Sorry, I didn't want to block my hands. Dude. We got to do the classic film. I'm, I'm filming you, up. filming me. No, I'm filming you. No, dog, I'm filming you. No, okay. okay. Hey, uh, <laughs> what's the Fortnite song? <laughs> But yeah, it made it. No problems at all, huh? Yeah, no, I did really good. Nice, dude. You know, really, the only issue I have with this thing is um, the fenders. They need to be... They should be wider. They should be further out because it's making contact with the tire under, like, really heavy compression. Um, the lift kit eventually yeah. will help. I was going to say, that. or you could lift it. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> so you, had, you had to use your little uh, tire track thing? Yep. Did they work? Um... <laughs> I couldn't really get out myself, but I was really dug in deep, but yeah. they did help when the guy came, like, they'll just pull me out. Damn. He just had a chain, and then I threw those under there and, um, you know, I had to use, put this thing in reverse and kind of yeah. go up there. So, it worked well, but, yeah, she made it. She did really good. class act. Yeah. <laughs> She's no 98 Civic, though, I guess, right? No, uh, never will be. No. So, if you don't know the backstory of Taylor and I's friendship, We've been friends since high school, and we bonded over cars, of course. No time was wasted at all, and we were right back to our regular shenanigans, laughing and having a good time. I gave uh, Garrett up at Wayward when this is your, your bid. Where the guy's like crying at the window. <laughs> Dude, just stand there in front of a crowd like... <laughs> My favorite is when you finish the race, and everybody's like... <laughs> and my guy's just like... Yep. So, uh, <laughs> girl, next one, <laughs> So y'all really like the gritty, huh? <laughs> getting out of there and like, he was like, hey, I have a pre-approved letter from my bank for like. You already know when we're with Taylor, we got to do the Audi things. We're going yep. for a ride in the spaceship. Spaceship, cool. Pardon my camera. Pardon my reach. Yeah. Too bad you don't have the Nissan home link. 
<laughs> you can tell it's broke because it's beeping. You know I'm smooth with it. JB smooth. <laughs> JB smooth. So, have you, well you beat the game already, but I saw that he was in, uh, um, High on Life. Yep. Yeah. He, is he the, he's like the frog gun or something, whatever it is. I think so. Something like that. I got some lean to when you get on it and squats that shit. Yeah. I've been in a prototype five for the past 1400 miles. <laughs> I feel like the like the supercar YouTubers that are like holding, they've got their tripod up here. They're like, yeah, I'm just going for a ride in the McLaren Altura. Yeah, there's, two, there's two kinds of car YouTubers. There's those guys, and then there's regular car reviews with the GoPro always strapped to his <laughs> forehead. <laughs> like he's shooting amateur porno. <laughs> POV, baby. You can see his shadow him like running alongside <laughs> the car. <laughs> yeah. He's got an insanely successful YouTube channel and has been using the same gear. Yeah, he loves to do that shit too. <laughs> Dude, things are so different here. Your target is brown and cream. No, that's where's, where's the red and that's white? That's not the target we normally go to. <laughs> You a man who can do both. Whoa. That is sweet. That's pretty good. It takes up, dude. Yeah. That's sweet. When did you do that? Uh, that was whenever I tuned with Brad. And now, an important word from our sponsors. So, as I mentioned earlier, Lost Fit is a partner of the channel. They recently supplied me with some of their flagship products. LED headlight bulbs to complete our Protégé 5 lighting setup. We already had the low beams, so let's throw on these high beams to complete the modern refresh. As you can see, their products are extremely high quality with high grade aluminum, braided wire, and even twist type waterproof connectors in the case of these bulbs, which are actually for the TC project, not the Protégé. But this idiot in the video doesn't know yet. Let's go ahead and show you how easy it is to modernize some of these older lighting setups with this wonderful new LED headlight setup. Once you have the correct bulbs, like I just discovered here, it's as easy as removing the old ones, plugging in the new harness that sometimes has a ballast, and then it's plug and play from there. Installation is as easy and smooth as my brain. Thanks, Lost Fit. <laughs> the first comment was to get this man behind the wheel. Bucky, you do not like it. Get this. Come here, Bucky. He's, he's scared of like things in general. It's like James. Come here. I say. Oh, is James a big baby with this stuff? Oh yeah. Say he doesn't care. She's brave. Hi. You can like check it out. Hi. Hi, Nick. Nika Pika. <laughs> And then we got the original. No, no, go over here. Are you ready to hit it? Well, what am I hitting? You're going to see which Mazda is the superior Mazda. And I'm leaving it ambiguous. The superior Mazda is the B2000 truck. Ooh, hot take! Before we go, we got important work to do. Yes. This is your mission to make your car better before we go. That's right. Only really the best for you. Oh, look, she's dancing. She's dancing for us. Woo! Hopefully you shawty on the dance floor. <laughs> okay, brand basis. Well, the is actually stuck to the window. Probably pretty good, especially in the heat. Having it in direct sunlight helps. Well. I think you're stinky and I like you a lot. Well, she got a little stain on her. Mm. Straight up looks like a poopy toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> stinky. A little bit of depresso in the morning is always nice. Yep, sad Pepe. For this sad car that has seen better days. But we still go anyways. We march forward. Pepe Gang Strong. He's looking down at this. Pepe Gang Strong. Yeah, he is. <laughs> He's sad. We got another one to put on here too. Uh -oh. 
Oh, we know you love the fish. Yeah, since this one, you know, this is the adventure vehicle, we gotta have, we gotta show people that we adventure, you know? Well, that we do things outside. Ooh, it's black as my soul. She's a little dirty, huh? Dirtier than my ex-wife on a Tuesday night. That's, that's pretty dirty, man. Tuesdays, yeah. you know, that's the day we get down. Yeah. It might be a little too closer if you get it. All right, so we are ready to hit this trail, man. Or not this trail, but I guess road. Was it Princess Anne? That's right. Princess Diane. This is a little in poor taste, but sounds like a fun road anyways. We can go. We should uh, have a little rev battle, see which one sounds best, which one is best Mazda. It's probably you. You think so? I don't know. Yours is going to be louder. It's not super loud, actually. It's deceivingly uh, a big pipe. Just like me. Rev off. You want a cold rev? Well, the plans changed a little bit for today. Taylor's got to go uh, meet his wife for an appointment they have. So I'm going to kill a little bit of time and go over to this old uh, this old military base that is uh, it's no longer being used as such, so you can go explore it. And Taylor said there's um, pretty good views there. So I'm going to go check that out. So it is Fort Monroe National Monument. Let me go check that out, see if I can get into some trouble, you know. This car is just like staggeringly fun and practical. I find myself just always wanting to drive the protege, you know? It's really easy to drive and it's fun. You're not really making any kind of real sacrifices when you drive this thing. The route, however, took me along the beach, of which, of course, I needed to stop off and see this for myself. made it officially to the east coast if i could drive on the beach i would i'd go dip the toes of this thing in the salt water although that's probably not a good idea given the rust problems that these cars already have so probably shouldn't but i am really thankful and grateful that this thing made it all the way 1400 miles here still running like a top you know, this thing really took a lot of work and I was kind of hesitant at first to put all this work into it and make this thing any better because, you know, at the end of the day, it was pretty rusted and there was a whole lot wrong with it. So in order to make this thing what it is, I really had to spend quite a bit of time and a fair bit of money, not anything crazy. But it shows you that if you are determined and dedicated and willing to put in the effort that something good can come through, it is worth pursuing, it's worth waiting for, worth pushing for. And not to get overly serious about these things, because at the end of the day, it is a car, but you know, as car people, we have these emotional attachments to stuff like this. But you know, it's, uh, it's got some parallels to life. You know, we, we weren't sure about this car, if it was ever gonna make the first trip that we did. It was already pretty rough, but we put it through a lot and it did okay, actually. It did come out the other side. Why not just put a little more effort into this thing and make it the car that we've always wanted
What do I want to say here, guys? I don't know. I'm trying to find something important to say as a seagull flies over my head. I don't know. Find something important in life and go after it. Do what you want. Do what makes you happy. You know, I was kind of worried about doing this long trip. I've never been on a really long road trip like this myself. I've always had someone with me, so it's been kind of interesting in that. I think uh, it seems like a lot of people are afraid to spend time with themselves and be alone for a bit. Um, but I can find that pretty healthy at times. 2022 has been kind of a loud year for me. I don't know, it just feels like it's been a little chaotic and not to be corny or cheesy, but going into 2023, I just, I want some things to change. I think I'm probably gonna end up taking a big social media break, at least for my personal pages. I'll still, of course, be doing the car stuff because that's my passion, but I think I just wanna take a step back, do some more traveling, you know, maybe travel with some sisterhood of some traveling pants or some maybe eat, pray, love journey for me. I don't know, but I wanna take this thing on more trips in 2023. This has been a fantastic road trip vehicle and I want this to be able to take me away from the noise of my life, the craziness, the anxiety, the depression, get me out of the house and get me exploring. I feel great when I see new things. I feel excited, I feel alive, you know? Just being here right now, I feel so much better than I would just staying at home. So even though these long trips can be tiring and a bit taxing in some ways, I always find it worth it. I'm always glad that I made the journey. All right, now it's time to go over here by the ocean and say some things that sound really prophetic. You know, this is good TV, me walking towards the ocean like this. And when I looked down, I only saw a set of footprints because God was holding me. I gotta go over here and say something cool. I'm gonna throw car batteries in the ocean. Recharge this planet. Recharge the anglerfish light bulbs. Oh, look at these. These pipes, man, they're rusty. They're almost as rusty as the Protege 5. Look at these ducks out here, man. They're ocean ducks. What was the name of the ocean duck? Look at this big old dove up here. Hi, shitty birds. Hold me, Jack, I'm flying. Actually, I actually really have to pee, and this would kind of be a great spot for it. All right, let's get the heck out of here. Let's go see this old military base. Since the beginning of time, man was always destined for his own journey. One man, one car, five doors, the Protégé 5, Protégé S, as we thought for a while. It's a pretty good view, but damn, I'm always tired. Could really use some coffee. Yeah, I think maybe we should get some coffee. Zoink.
So this is kind of interesting. It is um, it's an abandoned military fort, I guess. Uh, maybe a colonial era one, I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know anything about this place. Someone read Wikipedia and tell me. Okay, Fort Monroe, here we go. Pet Cemetery. Final resting places of military service animals. You know, not every bit of history is uh, is fun and cool. I mean, this is cool in a way for historical reasons, but it's got kind of a dark past, huh? First, uh, Africans arrived here and were traded for food. Bunch of dead animals. Pet cemeteries here, not the one by Stephen King. Um, yeah, and then I guess the Native Americans had used it at one point, but then it was taken over by us. And then lo and behold, it was used by the Confederacy. So yeah, a little bit of a checkered history here. Huh? With my extensive knowledge of history, it was time to turn on my TV host persona. As I walk up here, I can't help but be reminded of the American military industrial complex. Really makes you think. Really makes you go a lot with your brain. <laughs> hey, mom, please help. <laughs> There's a stranger. As I soaked in the rich history in the view, a kind family from New York asked me about my YouTuber persona, since I guess it's obvious that I'm some kind of influencer. Are you doing a road trip right now? Yeah. So where are you heading after? Um, back home. I'm from Texas. Wow. Yeah. 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 From New York. Did you know that history was founded when people started doing things? This is very interesting. I am walking on top of essentially what is the roof here of this building below me. These, uh, I think they're barracks or something. But um, yeah, it's got you know grass on it and all these um, the AC units and yeah, it's just so it's weird to be walking on the roof of somewhere. And uh, there's actually a bunch of gravestones back there that I passed that are part of a pet cemetery, as I mentioned earlier. One of the animals was named Juggernaut. Which is, uh, it's pretty damn sweet, actually. No idea what this is. It looks like a puzzle out of the Uncharted series. Jefferson Davis Memorial Arch. The Daughters of the Confederacy. Oh, how lovely. With that visit done, it was time to head out and head back to meet Taylor.
<laughs> it's pretty much all up front. Yeah. Well, I feel honored now I get to work in the old actual shop. That's right. This is where the scooter magic happens, right? This, this could be the Bruner Tuner headquarters. You just got to relocate your entire life That's across true. the country. That's all you have to do. I've heard nothing but pleasing things about this place from you. That's eh, not that bad. <laughs> just the drivers really suck. Hey man, I drove here. The thing is, is... All right, ladies and germs, I uh, got a few things to do here on the Mazda. I want to do a little bit of a tune-up for it. Um, seems like I might have developed a little bit of a rough idle sometimes. It's just... Um, it kind of stumbles every now and then. It's not anything really big, uh, but I do want to address that. I also want to do an oil change because I did quite a few miles up here and I'm already due for an oil change. It'll be a nice peace of mind to do that. So knock out an oil change. And then also want to find out if I can figure out why this um, factory sub isn't, it's not hitting as hard, bro. My, tw my 12s are not hitting so hard. Where'd you go here, bro? Hey. Super glue. Also, the um, coolant, or not the coolant reservoir, but the windshield uh, washer fluid reservoir. I broke the neck of it a while back, so I want to do that so I can have some um, wiper fluid in there. What else? I need to trim one of the fender flares that I temporarily threw on there because I did not finish all the body work and it's blocking the door from opening, so I need to do that as well, too. And then, um, yeah, and then I have some fuel system cleaner I'm going to throw in there as well, too, for good measure, so. Uh, Sarah, we are fully on set. Thank you. That following morning, it was time to take the Mazdas for a nice drive. So it looks like shit. Yep, mine too. <laughs> At least they drive nice. Arguable. <laughs> we'll figure it out.
So we're in a neighborhood called Pungo, which is more on the southeastern part of Virginia Beach, getting towards the North Carolina border. Uh, this area has got uh, kind of a lot more wilderness, more spread out. Um, there's a off-road park here, I believe. Um, so you'll see some off-road parks in the area, or off-road shops in the area. Yeah. Also some really good food out here. But I haven't really gotten much past this, so I think if we keep going south, we'll end up in North Carolina on our way to, which beach is it? That wasn't Nags Head, right? No. It was some uh, nature preserve okay. or something like that, yeah. All right, Taylor, so what are we here with? We are here with a couple of 20-year-old Mazdas. Yep. One's front wheel drive and the other is... The correct wheel drive. Correct wheel drive, that's right. I still manage to have fun in this thing though. Even though this is a little purpose built as kind of a long road trip slash light overlanding car, whatever we want to call it. I'm just gonna call it a safari. Safari seems proper enough. Okay. So still waiting on the lift kit to be produced so I can put that on this. But um, yeah, in this form right now, I sit, think it still does well as an enthusiast car. And I think it's kind of an underrated uh, platform for it. But to me, it always feels a bit like a front wheel drive wagon Miata. And so today we're kind of going to test that theory and see how it is against another 03 Mazda, the Miata. Oh, McLaren. <laughs> he poked his head out to look at our cars, dude. <laughs> Some guy in a McLaren 570 decided to slow down to look at a 20-year-old protege and Miata. Yeah, he popped his head out of the top, too, as a spider. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's cool. He's like, damn, is that 03 Mazda? <laughs> damn, is that a protege 5? <laughs> it's a protege 5 thing. You wouldn't get it. Um, yeah, so I, I want to kind of go back to back with these cars and swap, see your thoughts on the car, and just kind of see if the theory of it kind of feeling like a front wheel drive Miata, like an NB Miata, um, holds up. You know, they have like a very similar like dash uh, kind of shape and um, texture and material. The wheel is the same and it has the same lively kind of steering and just fun to drive nature that Mazdas are really good with. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we're gonna hit this little road here, Princess Anne Road. Hopefully it's not Princess Diane Road. Nope. Everyone hated that. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say? Uh, Insert uh, fallout. <laughs> yes, everybody. everyone disliked that. So what do you say we take these things out? Do we? Uh, you want to trade off now, or do you want to get a little into the road and then trade off? Let's uh, let's get out there a little further, um, see what these cars can do in our own hands, and then uh, okay. trade off and see what the difference is after driving Spirited in a car that we're so used to. Yeah, you're gonna regret me having 0.2 liters over you. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna gap you. Probably so. <laughs> no, not a chance. Let's hit the road. It was now time for the showdown of the 20 year old Mazdas.
wonderfully spirited drive, we finally reached the end of the road. was a great stopping point to admire the cars for what they are and take in the beautiful Virginia scenery around us. one car will never be everything that you ever want it to be and it'll never probably be in the shape that you want it to be or have the exact parts you want but you still need to enjoy it for what it is and what it can do where it can take you and everything in between We made it to the end of the uh, Princess Road, or Prince Prince Anne. Princess Anne? Princess Peach Road. Yes, we're yeah. here. Yeah, this was actually a pretty cool little road. Um, I wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to find anything good out here. When uh, when I got here, you know, it was a lot more flat than I guess I was probably expecting, which makes sense of a coastal region. Um, I don't know, you think of Virginia, you think of hills and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, coming out here was actually pretty good and uh, the road quality was awesome. Yeah, definitely. So we, we actually spoke to a, a group of uh, motorcycle riders and they said it was recently paved and this is about the best as it gets out here, unfortunately. Um, if you go more inland Virginia, you know, you get in the mountainous regions and stuff, um, up in Shenandoah, you'll, you'll find some really, really nice stuff out there. Um, but this is what we have here on the coast and I gotta say, it's not too bad. But, you know, this car, um, you know, it just, it feels fun to drive. It's obviously not a track car. It's not a high performance car in any way, but it is fun to drive, so. I'm just enjoying it. So I think you actually need to take this thing for a drive. Yeah, you say we uh, do the old wife swap? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right. Yeah, I hate my wife, so. Okay. Sweet. 
it kind of feels the same because of the same like starter and the same like kind of dash uh, shape and material. But um, it's definitely a more focused and dialed version of a car. Wow. It's so, it's, that car is pretty direct for what it is, but I mean, this is like ultra tight. It would be fun to put some uh, similar tires on the Protégé and see how it feels. All right, we are in the J. The Protégé 5 Overland vehicle. Um, I mean, what can you say about this thing? It is, uh, it's rough in all the right ways, if that makes sense. Ripped for her pleasure, you could say. Um, not really, enough of the banter. Um, just get some quick driving impressions. Uh, right away, yeah, the same exact steering wheel as the Miata. Um, same wiper stalks, the same key. Uh, it all feels very, very familiar. It doesn't feel as like direct as the Miata, of course, but, um, and these tires, they, they actually feel pretty good. And let me tell you, whenever we first uh, got this thing for the channel, man, the suspension was very rough. David has put in countless hours uh, redoing basically every bushing, trailing arm, sway bar end link, I mean all kinds of stuff he was redoing on this car. And it shows. It feels a lot tighter, a lot more planted, and uh, it doesn't wander quite like it did whenever we first had it for the bachelor trip. This is a, is a refined experience. It's a distilled essence of Mazda. This is 90 proof Mazda. That is more like 60 proof. After that copious amount of driving and filming that we did, it was time to head back to Taylor's place. Geology. What the hell geology? On the last day I was there, we decided to do some more filming for the channel and film a few video clips of Taylor's Audi B5 S4. He recently resurrected this car and brought it back to life, and that video is up on our channel now. Go check it out if you like all things cars, or specifically Audis. All right, y'all. This is the last morning. I don't know why I'm talking like that. It's because I'm headed back to Texas. Last morning here, just said our goodbyes. It was extremely good to see Taylor and Clarissa again. Miss those guys. It always sucks when uh, you know one of your best friends moves across the country, but you know we'll be re reunited someday back in the old Texas, probably. So let's go ahead and get back into this old wonky piece of shit make our way back now. Hope we survive.
Alrighty guys, we are about four hours back into this trip. We we're outside of uh, Charlotte, just by a little bit. <clears throat> just wanted to give a quick update here. Car is doing really well. Just uh, having to add some oil here and there. Tires are holding pressure great. Everything's working uh, wonderfully, and I just couldn't be happier with this thing. Wanted to mention something else as well here too. Now that I'm alone again on this road trip, you know, I'm, uh, I'm pretty accustomed to spending a lot of time by myself. Um, you know, if, if I'm not at my office working, I'm at home working and often just spend quite a bit of time by myself. So um, it was really good to see uh, Clarissa and Taylor again and spend some time with them. But now that I'm on my own again, I feel, I don't know, it's, um, I just feel like I'm back alone in my own world and that's kind of when things get quiet and uh, you start to hear your inner dialogue and have some of those insecurities again and worries and there's nothing to distract you. Except for uh, cars that drive by. Nice Lexus. There's always that for me. But uh, I think I alluded to 2022 being kind of a not so great year and I mean there was definitely a lot of good things for sure and I don't want that to be overshadowed by bad but I really kind of struggled in in last year and uh, I've always kind of wanted to bring that aspect to the channel of you know openness and uh, honesty and show that you know sometimes it's okay to not feel all right um, it is what it is I'll be okay but you know in these moments where you're by yourself you just kind of start to hear your uh, you just kind of start to hear your inner voice and understand things and you know I think um, I think that's good in a way it can be hard but it can be good you just need to drown those things out and uh, you know listen to what's important to you and find that focus <clears throat> and uh, improve whatever you need to do whatever you need to to feel well and uh, yeah I just thought I'd share that two cents as I'm making this long ass drive back home get back in the car because I'm tired of people looking at me. Now, I know I sound super depressed here, and yeah, sometimes I am, but acknowledging that and finding ways to cope are the healthy ways to approach something like that. It sucks that one of my closest friends moved away and we rarely will see each other, but that's temporary. Life moves in seasons. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Making videos and sharing these experiences has been a great hobby as well as an outlet. Just remember that when things are hard, good things are often just around the corner. So just like the first site that I found, this is another site that I found on Hip Camp, which is basically Airbnb for camping. It was out in the middle of the Talladega Woods and it turned out to be really cool and the owner was super friendly. It's a cool little plot of land. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, most people have actually preferred this spot right here. Okay, thank you very much. All right, we are here at the campsite and I'm just gonna get everything set up here. It's pretty cool. This is uh, over in the country, right on the border of Alabama and Georgia. Got some really nice uh, landowners here and probably firewood and stuff too, so I'll even make a little fire back here. This is nice. Camouflage friends there. Sorry, I'm wearing the light, so it's getting in the way. Woo! Gotta watch out for those.
All right, do I look scary enough for you? Yeah, we got it going. I uh, I was worried there at first because it wasn't quite taking, and uh, I really haven't started in a fire in quite a while. And uh, sometimes it can make it difficult, especially if it's damp out here. With a little bit of perseverance and maybe a little bit of luck, we got this thing going. You know, it's uh, just like anything worth having in life. Sometimes you gotta work for it just a little bit. And right when you're on the edge of uh, success and you feel like giving up, sometimes it's right after that that the success comes. So keep that in mind, whether it's project cars, life, whatever it may be. Getting nice and deep on this uh, road trip, aren't we? Let's enjoy this fire. Alrighty guys, another successful night of tent camping. Or car camping, I don't know why I said tent. It's early, I'm really tired. But it is beautiful out here too. So let's get everything loaded back up though and hit the road back home. With another successful night of camping, it was time to hit the unproblematic road once again. Or so I thought. Okay guys, well I'm only about two hours away from home and um, I've hit what seems to be a somewhat big problem here. It feels like there's maybe like a massive misfire going on here. The car just started bogging and was being really jerky with, uh, with the power and it was cutting out. I managed to kind of limp it onto the uh, onto the shoulder and then pull off onto this little by road here. So I'm actually uh, pretty concerned because uh, there's really nothing around here. Um, and I'm still about two hours away from home and I've got work tomorrow, so. I don't know, let's take a look and see what we can find out. see anything immediately obvious here. I don't know what is going on. Everything looks perfectly intact. Um, you know, I, uh, I don't know, it feels like some kind of crazy misfire or something. Well, very odd. Uh, seems to be revving just fine and making power okay. Let's try to start driving it again and see what happens. I'm so fortunate in uh, the fact that I was able to get on this service road. The highway's right there. And this service road goes into town, which is, you know, uh, 12 minutes away into an O'Reilly's and auto zone next to each other. Um, only problem is I can't go above um, about 1500 RPMs. I'm in third gear right now doing about 18 miles an hour so this is going to take a bit and it's like pissing rain now and I, I can't really get out and uh, take a look at anything so uh, I hope this gets me there so I can see what that check engine light is. By the way that's been there the whole time uh, for like an emissions code, but I don't know what uh, what's going on. Probably has something to do with this. But yeah, I mentioned this is um, a perfect time to plug that 
MOSFET LED light bar as we are quite literally in the middle of nowhere and it is uh, spooky as hell out here. Um, without this, I am passing creepy little shack houses and uh, you can hear the swamp frogs going crazy and there's fog everywhere. So thank you, Lost Fit. At least I can count on one thing today. Now we are on one of these main roads doing 30 miles an hour in fifth gear. This feels wrong on many levels, but as long as I keep it below 1500, which uh, I can still use cruise control. It's nice. But yeah, this feels wrong. Man, I'm telling you, for a problem, my luck is pretty good considering the car still drives. I limp it here and uh, got an O2 sensor and um, a uh, camshaft, position, camshaft position sensor code. And uh, they had both those parts in stock, so why won't you focus? And the guy was super cool. He let me borrow a crescent wrench so I could uh, change this O2 sensor and it stopped raining. So let's try to do this real quick again. Thank you to the gentleman here at O'Reilly's and whatever city this is, I'll put that here in the voiceover. Oh yeah, this is one of the generic splice-in types. Huh? Ah. Oh, he's got the film lighting. All right, it's been a couple hours since the last update. I think I was in O'Reilly's parking lot. Nothing worked, nothing at all. So about three hours later, this this angelic man here, I'm gonna insert a halo above you in uh, in post, drove two and a half hours away from, no more, probably like three, over three, because you're on, you're in Fort Worth side. Um, yeah, West Fort Worth. Yeah, on a Sunday night, just dropped everything to come out here. Of course, he has to flex and uh, show up in a rescue Corvette Z06. I thought he was going to drive his little humble Ford Taurus, but yeah, it's going to drive me home. Unless we manage to fix this thing right now, which we just thought of an idea. And uh, in that case, we'll just convoy back, but maybe I'll ride back in the Z06. Maybe I'll drive it home. <laughs> no. You know, the irony of this trip starting with the purpose of visiting a friend and then being rescued by one at the end is not lost on me. Friends are hard to come by, and great friends are even more rare. I can't thank Travis enough for dropping everything and coming to help a friend in need. The next day, I rented a U-Haul trailer, got the Tundra, and went out to rescue the Protégé 5. With the car back home, and after going through different diagnostics and a few different parts, it turned out all it was was a failed knock sensor. 15 bucks later, and we're back in business. I can't say enough great things about this trip. I had a wonderful time seeing new things, catching up with old friends, and generally just having a fun time all around. I know it sounds corny, but this car took me to these places and allowed me to have these experiences. It's the vessel that got me there, and more or less got me home. And for that, I'm appreciative. Thank you all for watching, and we hope to see you on our next video.